Good. Yes. All right, guys. We have Josh here. Um, Madi, please kick us off with Josh. Sure. Sure, sorry. Josh, how's it going? What's up, brother? How you doing? Doing well, doing well. We spoke a little bit after your last fight. Get in the quick six. How do you foresee this fight playing out? Do you feel like you you have the advantage in the in the grappling and the striking, or if in anything at all? Yeah, you know, I think I have advantage everywhere in the in the in, in this fight. The the one thing that I lean on the most, I think it comes down to IQ, you know, decision making. And I think um a punch is a punch, right? Everyone punches hard, everyone kicks hard. But I think decision making is what makes a fighter um makes a difference in the fight. I think I'm just gonna have a little bit better IQ than dealing. And uh, I think it's just gonna be a good matchup for me in general, you know. Absolutely. Thank you, Josh. Good luck this weekend. Ready. We're ready to all right, Madi. I'm so sorry about that. Could you please continue? It's all good. Uh, I was just wanted to thank you, Josh, for for the answer and uh, good luck this weekend. But uh, last question here: uh, You don't really have a, a defined nickname. We need to get a nickname for you. Yeah. So, so um, I've always had a, a nickname within within my family, but I think it's time for for the nickname to um, to come out. Right? It's been hiding for a long time, and and my nickname um, it's been with me for a long time. Um, it's, it's based off of my dad's nickname. My dad's known as Conan and, and I'm known as Konia. Um, if anyone knows Konia, it's just, uh, basically a, a smaller version of Conan and, um, guys call me that at the gym. Um, it has a lot of history with, within my family. So I think we're going with Konia. It's just be a little hard for the American people to, to do the Nia part, Konia, but, um, I'm sure we'll figure it out. I'm sure we'll figure it out. <laughs> That's awesome. Josh Conia Silvera. Thank you so much. Good luck this weekend. Yes, sir. Thank you. Anik. Josh, Anik Subramanian, Fightbook MMA. You got a six point finish in your first fight this season. As a result, any sort of victory Thursday guarantees you a playoff spot. Does your approach change knowing that you don't desperately need a finish? Um, my approach doesn't change. I think my approach is just a little bit more, if anything, I'm going to be a little bit more careful um, with what's going on because I know my opponent needs them points, but um, the approach never changes. Um, you know, I am who I am. I fight the way I fight. I don't really feel like I have to change um, for that many people. Um, of course, avoid big right hands, big uppercuts, big loopy shots. Um, but other than that, um, you're going to see me imply my, my game, you know, I'm going to, put the pressure, look for the takedown and get the submission. If that doesn't work out, then we're, we're looking to go up top with some head kicks or, you know, kicks to the body, whatever, whatever presents itself. Awesome. And one more from me. I know your father must be so proud seeing his son follow in his footsteps and achieve great success in MMA. If you were to win the belt, would he be the first person that you hand that belt to? Of course, he would be the first person. Uh, he would probably be the person to put the belt on my waist or throw it over my shoulder. He'll probably ask Ray Sefo, uh, let me let me take care of this part. Um, but yeah, um, it's been like that in LFA. My dad's uh, my LFA belts is in my dad's office. Um, I tell people all the time, I, I'll uh, I'll celebrate all those trophies later on when I'm an old man. But right now, it's uh, let's just keep winning, keep stacking up the hardware, keep putting money in the bank, and uh, build a better future for myself and we'll enjoy those belts later on. Awesome. Always great talking to you. Uh, good luck on Thursday. Thank you, brother. Mills. What's going on, Josh? It's MMA locker room, part of Pulse Sports Radio. What's happening, brother? How you doing? Man, how's Atlanta treating you out there? It's great, man. I love the the quick flight, Florida, Atlanta, one, one hour, 20 minutes. Um, better than going to Vegas sometimes or traveling you know across the country um i'm liking it man it's good nice and temperature out here 
Got it, got it, got it. I mean, with you training at American Top Team, you know, there's a lot of fighters in there fighting with a lot of organizations, you know, a lot of competition going on. It, what's the sparring like when you guys are actually training in there? Is there anybody in there that's trying to stick it to the PFL guys a little bit more, you know, because they're part of that organization? Or, or what's the training like? So the, the training at American Top Team, um, in my opinion, you know, I've trained many other places when I lived in Arizona. Um, and even when I, when I went to Brazil a couple of times in the past, I've trained in other places and American top team, um, a lot of professional fighters, a lot of guys making big money. And I think everybody kind of has that same mindset. So we're, we're actually, as much as people think we're, we're a competitive team, um, we actually take care of each other pretty well. Um, we know that it's not just a couple thousand dollars on the line. These guys are fighting for big money, you know? So, um, for example, you know, like we don't want to see a guy like Poirier get hurt. You know, we know that that paycheck's big. It's important for him, important for the team. So we're we're very professional, but we do have some young cats in there that are hungry, man. You know, it's 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 inevitable. It's gonna happen. American Top Team's the best gym in the world. Um, so we we do have hungry guys in there, but we're a little bit more controlled than um than people might think we are. You know. Uh, it's, it's really those little local gyms that have that one superstar and he's murdering everybody, you know, but here we have a lot of superstars. We have a lot of guys respect each other and we're very calculated with our trainings. And then just to follow up on that, you, you said something about best in the world. I mean, there's been a lot of talk going on about, you know, best in the world champion versus champion. And I feel like PFL hasn't been noticed in that uh, sentence yet. You know, they've been saying comparing Bellator champions to UFC champions. I think that, you know, if you were able to get that belt, I think you might be able to make a claim for that statement, too, to put PFL on the map to compare their champions to the other champions, right? For sure. For sure. I think PFL is a growing organization. I think like any organization in the beginning, there's some bumps in the road and, and you really have to um, show the world some of these fighters um, so they could see them. But man, PFL has great fighters. Um, we're all competitive guys. Um, a lot of the, a handful of the guys fought in the UFC before, you know, so we have, a we have, we have great competitors and I, and I think, man, it's, it's very soon that we're going to see that competitive edge that you're talking about where we can compare the PFL fighters to some of the best fighters in the world. All right. Good luck rooting for you this Thursday. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Gavin. All right, Josh Gavin from Air Thomas Gavin here. So obviously with the light heavyweights having a lot of suspended fighters, what was your reaction to that? You know, it's, it's an unfortunate um, situation, but um, uh, it's not the, the first time we've seen this type of thing happen in the, in the sport, you know, it's unfortunate, but we just got to keep moving on and, and looking forward. Okay. Thanks. Good luck. Yes, sir. Thank you. Marty. Hey Josh, we know you're not paid by the hour, so uh, it was a good good win last fight. Um, how important is it that you were able to come out almost unscathed and and just have a uh, you know that short time in the uh, in the smart cage? Super important, man. You know, I think the the biggest thing on my list that night was to get the the win, even if I came out with a arm missing or a leg gone. You know, I think the main thing was to get the win, but but getting it the way it did as fast as it was not hurt. You know, that's just blessings on blessings right there. I can't really control that aspect of the fight. All I could do is go in there and get that victory. Nice. And we know you've got a taste for gold, obviously you two LFA belts. Um, how, how important is it that you get this belt 2023 PFL playoffs? It, it's important, man. It's, I want to say, I want to say it's my life, man. You know what I mean? It's uh Thursday. I get to, to, uh, write another chapter of, uh, of my life. You know, this is not just, uh, you know, I'm going in there and going to throw some leather around it. I could really, um, sway some good things in my future, you know, and, and winning the bell is, is something that's definitely going to assist me, my family, um, my, my supporters around me. So this is a huge thing, man. This is extremely important. And, um, you know, I feel better than ever. Good luck. Thank you, brother. Danny. 
Josh, um, just wondering with the suspensions, um, how did it make you feel? Did it make you feel uh, bad because like some some of the bigger names, specifically the champion for from the year prior, uh, were taken out, and obviously you know some you won't be able to face them. We're happy because in a way like the system's working. Um, overall, how was how was your feelings towards the whole thing? You know, I think I, I felt more more unfortunate for for my my teammates. You know, um, but for me, you know, overall, I think it was a no reaction thing for me. You know, I think it was just news. I read it and I move on. You know, um, I really can't worry about everyone else um and, and what happens outside of the cage you know so for me it was just to move forward um not really react um that's been a big thing for for this year um a big principle in my training is no reaction you know if the training gets hard don't react when times get tough don't react when crazy news comes out no reaction you know um i'm here to do my job and 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 win this thing yeah and that division is obviously uh very competitive i don't know if this has changed your your stance towards it, but do you feel like now you're like a clear favorite in winning the whole thing? Danny, did you have another question? All right, Danny, continue your question. Apologies. Yeah, no, no worries. Um, and so yeah, so I was saying, um, you know, a lot of people probably going into the season would have Rob as the favorite, given that he won. You know, he's the champion from the year prior. Uh, but with him out of the picture, do you feel like you you take that role and you're the favorite to win the season? Uh, I'll answer yes, humbly, you know, a fight's a fight. Um, I, I wasn't matched up with Rob, you know, um, who knows if we would have fought or not. I think it would have been a great fight. Um, of course I think about it, but, um, I got to think about Dylan and round number two. Um, but to answer your question, yeah, it's, it's hard not to think like that. You know, he was the big competitor in there, but, um, I'm a competitor. I was looking forward for the matchup if it were to happen, but, um, this is the reality. This is what we're, we're facing. So, um, if Rob was in there, Rob was out, could be all the, the same guys from the beginning. My mentality was the same way. You know, I, I believe in myself and I know I can win. Thank you. Best of luck. Thank you, sir. Patrick Dana. Hey Josh, how are we doing today? Good brother. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. So uh, you've been in the PFL for a bit now, and uh, you uh, you fought a couple of different guys. You beat Martin Hamlet, who's now in first place in the division. Is that a fight you're looking to get back at some point in the future, or do you think that one win was enough? Well, I I mean I to to be honest, it's not really my my my, uh, my option of what happens. You know, um, I think the rematch is is very. Um, capable of happening with how things worked out. Um, you know, I'm very, uh, if I fight Hamlet again, I'm going to treat it like it's our first fight. I don't keep, you know, the, it's very short memory for me. Um, that was a great time, but, um, if anything, I feel like he's probably eager to get that rematch back. I know I would, um, whatever happens happens, but for how the scenario should play out since he has six points, I have six points. It might be something that will happen in, in the finals possibly. Okay. So what do you think about some of the new fighters added to the weight class? Um, is there anyone in uh, particular that like piques your interest for a fight? Man, they, they, they all, they all catch my attention. I got respect for all those guys. Um, uh, I've, I competed at the same card with Taylor Johnson at the challenger series, and he's from American top team, um, on the other side of the country in Oregon. Um, so I, I kind of know where he comes from his background. Um, I used to watch the UFC fighter house with, with Andrew Sanchez in there. I'm pretty sure he, he competed in, in the season. So, so I'm familiar with him too. Um, me and Impa met in Abu Dhabi when he, he uh, unfortunately he got that, that crazy KO that happened to him, but I, I met him during that time. So I know a little bit about all these guys and, and they're all dangerous, man. Um, they they all came, uh, they, they all, they're all coming here to win. I'm sure they see the same opportunity that I, that I see, especially with all the confusion that happened these past couple of weeks. Um, so they, they probably, they, you know, they want to win just as bad. So I I'm respecting all these guys. Um, I just think I'm just going to be a hard time for everybody. Okay. Awesome. Good luck this weekend. Thank you, brother. All right. Last question for Euro. 
Hey, Josh. Um, at the Vegas Media Day, I asked you who inspired you the most, and you responded with your father. You mentioned that a lot of young people growing up have this imagination of their dad being like the strongest guy in the world, and that you never seem to like escape that and get over that. Um, how special <laughs> is your guys' relationship, and how has he helped you throughout your career? Our relationship is is pretty close, um, and I think we've gotten closer because we've both had our own dark experiences. You know, my father has had you know, many ups and downs in his life. And I went to go and have many ups and downs in my life. And I think now it's, it's a perfect mix. Um, he knows my dark places. I know his dark places. He knows where I strive. I know where he feels good about where I'm at. Um, and it just works out well. He tells me the things that I don't want to hear, but that's just how life works sometimes. And you always need that person that's going to tell you the hard, hard truth. And I think um, that's just going to, you know, that's just that, you know, that you build that throughout years of, of, of not just competing. I think you build that through um, being honest with each other, um, telling each other how you feel. And, and when you get pushed to that physical limit, man, um, you really will get to know a man, <laughs> you know, um, my dad's probably seen me exhausted, seen me crying, seen me you know, all sorts of, of different emotions. So I think that all just ties in to, uh, to this, this perfect night that we're going to have Thursday night, you know, it's just, it's all going to tie together. That's awesome. And last one for me, um, what excites you the most about Delon Monte as an opponent? Uh, what excites me the most is he, he has a lot of energy. I, I know him personally. Um, you know, he's going to come to fight and, um, what I think what I really like about him, man, is I think everybody counts him out since the beginning. Everybody was counting him out. And here he is still in the PFL, still competing, still fighting hard. So, so I, I have a lot of respect for him. Thank you and good luck. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, Josh. Thank you so much. Pre